lot of familiar faces. And my name, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Stephanie Keen. I'm the Public Relations Manager for Honeywell Process Solutions. And I want to welcome you to our press conference, as well as say thank you that you're still hanging in there. I know it's been quite a long day for you already. Promise we'll make it worth your while. And um, with that being said, you should get an email from us with our press release very shortly here. And we're very excited about what this press release announces. It's um, the latest addition to our Honeywell Connected Plan portfolio, and it's called Immersive Competency. And without further ado, I would like to introduce Yusuf Mastari. He's the program director for Honeywell Connected Plan and knows a lot more about this than I do. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for, uh, for staying here and enjoying the snacks. I make it as, uh, as fun and learning as possible. So uh, I'm thrilled today to announce the launch of um, Immersive Competency. And in a nutshell, what, you know, what, what is like the top line of that program is, is basically a competency program that leverage augmented reality and virtual reality to improve people competency and link it to plant performance. And, and I repeat, to link it to plant performance. This is a breakthrough. Never happened before in any competency program that measures success based on the improvement brought to the plant in terms of production and in terms of reduced downtime. Competency program usually measures success based on number of attendance and uh, a feedback. Did you like it? between rating between one and five. This is how usually we say this is a good competency program or not. Now we're shifting that, not only on the effort, how many people we have trained, but on results. What is the impact of that competency program on plant performance? So that's the highlight today. So, but before I tell you more about this product, let me, let me tell you a, a story I heard from, from a customer two weeks back. Um, so this customer is a major player in oil and gas, and every eight years, he has to go through an inspection round uh, for 97 steps. So this year, about last month, they had to go through this 97 steps. So they looked around and say, who did it last time? And unfortunately, those were not around anymore. They retired. So they designated uh, two uh, freshly hired, and trained uh, field workers, millennials, and they said, hey, yo, here is the sheet, step-by-step -step sheet. Trust me, it, it's self-explanatory. Just, just go and do it. They said, okay, all right, all right. And they said, well, can I bring somebody else because it's, it's new for me. So they went two. The two people were going to, and everything went well uh, up to step 55. Right? And they come in step 55, and they say, pull out the fuse from the fuse box. And there are two fuse boxes. So what they do is like, all right, they did what I would have done, right? So I opened the first one. Oh, it looked like the same fuse box. It's the same fuse. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. They, they pulled it. Nothing happened. They were supposed to see a, a, a light that, that switch off. I said, okay, well, well, let's try the second one. They pulled it off as, as well. 15 minutes later, a fire lit up on a compressor. They had to evacuate everyone contain the fire, shut down the plant, three weeks of shutdowns, $10 million loss. So why am I telling you this story? So is it, is it like a one-off story? In fact, more and more of these stories are gonna happen in the coming years, and why? 50% of the workforce in the oil and gas industry will retire in the next five years. 50%. That's not an exaggeration. That's a fact. Because back in the 60s, the first industry that was hiring was oil and gas. So there is no surprise, 50 years later, the first industry that will face the retirement problem is the oil and gas industry. So 50% of the workforce, what does it mean? How, what, what's the challenge for the operator or for the uh, a plant manager, how do you retain that knowledge that we're gonna go with the retiring workforce? The second challenge is the millennials, the new generation, they like YouTube, they like everything on demand. They like to learn when they want, 
what they want. So how do you keep the knowledge from the retirees and give it back to the millennials the way the millennials want? If you think you're gonna train the millennials the way we all used to be trained, sitting in a classroom and going through 700 slides and six days training, that's not gonna happen. They wanna train exactly what they want, when they want, and probably in the field as they're doing their job. So that was, that's, that's, that, that was an aha moment, right? And, and, and think about it from a plant manager perspective. He has the pressure from management saying, I need more throughput. You need to reduce your cost. And, and that's his target. He has that pressure. Commodity prices are going down up and, and keep going up, down and down. The pressure is always there. So he has to produce always more with less. And he has to achieve this goal while he has a shifting workforce. The most experienced, the most knowledgeable are leaving and fresh hiring coming uh, with, with low retention. Fact number two, millennials stays only two years in their positions today. So you have only two years to get the most out of them. After that, they're gone. Maybe Google or some biotech company. But, but that's, that's another, another fact, how you make their job interesting enough and match their lifestyle in the private life so you can retain them longer. How you can leverage the new technology to keep them in place. So this is how we defined our Skills Insight program. It has three pillars. It has to crack the competency, keeping the knowledge within the plant, giving it back to the millennials the way they want it. This is why immersive competency take all its sense because classroom will not work anymore. We have to move into new technology. Immersive competency has even a higher value. Learning by doing has 80% retention rates after three months. Learning, passive learning methods like listening, like today is only 20 to 30% after three months. So basically when I meet you in three months and ask you how did it go, you probably won't remember me. <laughs> But, so this is how we're defining a program around immersive competency, learning by doing. And those exact step-by-step -step procedure, they're learning into immersive competency. We're taking it and giving it back while he does his work. He's learning as he work and he work as he learn. That's our second pillar, productivity. We have the first intrinsically safe hard hat that can streams all those step-by-step -step procedures in the field, in the moment, real time exact same procedure that he just learned in the immersive competency. He can also, when he got stuck, he can call an expert, remote expert. We call it Swiss, see what I see. They can interact. We don't need to wait anymore for, a, for an expert to fly if it's an offshore platform. Think about the cost for, for having an expert. We don't, wait. we don't need to wait. Everything is in the moment. Everything is digital. Everything is perfect fit for the millennials, and everything is capturing the knowledge of the retiring workforce. Number three, as we achieve on those things, and now we're putting all those connected and, 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 and software around our people, we, we cracked also safety. Safety comes always first. So why don't we put some G-force um, sensors that can detect a man down situation? You know, having a man falling down has a G-force different from somebody leaning to grab a tool. Well, we're using that information and we have also solutions that use those informations to detect uh, remotely and, and, and smartly safety, uh, safety hazards that are, that are uh, about to happen. So that's about skills insight. So let, let me le tell you now back to, to our big launch today, the immersive competency. Let me tell you a little bit more. Oh, before that, so, sorry. Now, skills inside, we talked about the three pillars, competency, productivity, and safety. We measure that success. We say, okay, we talk about outcome. How, how much of the outcome can we aspire? What are the success story? And here is the great news. We tested it. First, we can reduce the training period from six months, technical training from six months to two months. How come, you would say? because we, only, we have individual assessment and competency gap analysis that will define at individual level what is the competency program. We only train people what they need to be trained on. We don't train everyone on everything. 
you shorten the period of training. Number two, higher competency retention after three months. We talked about it. Augmented reality and virtual reality help us there. Number three, 15% reduction in, in, in incidental and waste activities. When you think about a shift of a worker, there's a lot of waste, motions, going back and forth, forgetting uh, a tool, coming back to, to take that tool and then come back to execute that task. Those motion waste, we can, we can eradicate them. Step-by-step -step procedures tell you also pre-checks. What are the tools and safety checks that you need to go through before you start doing the job? So you always have the right toolbox to do the job. You're eradicating all this waste. That means faster time to react to any shutdown. That means faster mean time to repair. And faster mean time to repair means higher uptime. That means plant performance go up. And that's why we are the only one who can link competency program to plant performance. People performance to plant performance. Now, here is how it looked like. That immersive competency, it starts with a dashboard and, and, and the trainee, it's, it's uh, on demand, he can come, uh, it's, it's real time, in the cloud, wherever he want to take it, and he has his, his certification level. We know who's logging in, Oops, sorry, and what his certification level, what are, what are his assessment level, what are the training progress, and he can select the lesson. And the best way to explain this, this uh, immersive competency is take you through an example. And, and, and this is how we're remodeling or reshuffling the way sort of a, 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 a field worker or, in, or a maintenance worker is doing his job. Through immersive competency, let's put ourselves into the, the, the shoes of a maintain, maintainer. He has to execute a maintenance task on a specific asset. He, first, he goes into immersive competency. He does exact same task that he needs to do, step by step. He's guided. First, he has a show me scenario. He, he sits there, he sees that asset and how he can pull, pull the cage, uh, fix what needs to be fixed, etc. And the next step is try me, where, or guide me, where he has guidance. He has step by step, he said, now step one, you have to do this. And then he does it himself. And then step two, you have to do that. And invite you all to, to see it by yourself. It's, it's, in the, it's in the boot. This is real. This is not a dream. This is not a vision. This is reality. Augmented a little bit, but it's true, still a reality. So, so he can try it. No. See, let, let, back to this maintainer, uh, once he does this job, let's say he goes through the whole scenario. There is try me, where now he has to do the whole process without guidance. He needs to remember what are the steps. Once he does those steps, is he certified to go to do the job? No, because there is two criteria. He needs to be quality compliant. That means he did exact same, same steps in the same order. And number two, he has to do it below a certain time. Because this is how we can send somebody that is certified and go in the, in the field and does the exact same step. And we can ensure the lowest mean time to repair and therefore higher uptime. So this is exactly like the model of the pilot flying a plane. A, a pilot never goes and, and take a plane before going to a simulator. This is how we're remodeling and reshuffling the maintenance and training program to ensure that there is, it, it is directly linked to the plant performance. Now, so you, you, you could see here, it's, as you said, the, the, and I mentioned all of these, immersive, it's simulation-based. We have a couple of scenarios. We have uh, families of scenarios. We started, so this is freshly launched. So the first family of scenarios are around what we do best at Honeywell, the control system. So we have one on the experience, how, how to detect a C300, faulty C300, the universal IO, how to replace it, et cetera. And all of you guys, if you want to see how fast you can learn, how, uh, even if you never heard about it, if, even if you've never seen a cabinet before, just go to the booth and you will see how to change a C300 faulty cabinet in less than five minutes. See it and, and, and to believe it. So we have a family around the cabinet. We have a family around the assets. We're building uh, scenarios around how to install it, how to configure, how to maintain, how to inspect, and how to replace spare parts. And those assets, we're doing it for, um, for burners, for um, uh, skids metering, and for ultrasonics to start with. 
So we're going to keep building scenarios. Now we have just put the skeleton and we have a family of scenarios. And as we go down the line, you're going to see more and more families coming for, to complement that, that training. And I'm going to leave you with this uh, uh, last thought. What are the benefits? The benefits are at a multiple layer. The first benefit is for the plant manager. Because for the first time, when he invests in a competency program, he will see results in plant performance. And in fact, we get paid based on the success as well. We have fees at risk because we are willing to put, take the risk on the plant performance. Number two, the supervisor. But think about the supervisor who has a whole team of maintainers. Now he knows who's the best to do specific tasks. Now he's now he can assign the best, the best worker for the best for the best fit task. So we are leveraging the strength of every worker and assigning smartly the task to every worker. So this is how you get more efficient in your turnaround. Number three, HR managers. Now since we have individualized um, assessment, individualized competency program and competency gaps, now we can fast track those um, uh, talent and you can focus more on specific gaps for those who are the laggers. And you can know HR become, uh, has an adaptive tool to adapt the, comp the competency program to the speed of learning of everyone, to make it relevant to everyone. No one is left behind and no one is slowed down. And last, the maintenance staff, obviously, as they go through the training, it's very, uh, it's fun. They learn by doing, they will remember, they get more performance, they're more, more excited, they're mesmerized through the learning, learning journey. So that's about it, I'll close here, I'll stop here, and I'll, I'll take any, any of your questions, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so do we have, um, uh, just repeating the question, so do, do we have a way to track the return on investment uh, for uh, linked to the competency program? Yes or no? We can track it at operation level. Improvement in throughput, improvement in mean time to repair for specific tasks. Uh, we can't track it at financial level, PNL level. There's much more variable into that. So we can track what we can, we have influence and we have actionable, um, um, uh, that are actionable within our space of control. So we're just launching it today. <laughs> so we had, we had, we had that, we had that, but we had a very good feedback. It was, it was very well received, uh, and and we need more than two years to see if people will stay two years or not. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Check back in with you next.